Hello, this is Dr. Jason Meyer. Together we are going to discuss the topic of your nose. Specifically, we are going to address the underlying anatomy and how that relates to the function of your nose, as well as the cosmetic appearance of the nose. First, let's get a look at what is going on under the skin. The nose is made up of both bone and cartilage. The upper third of the nose, commonly called the bridge, is made up of the nasal bones. Here is a picture of nasal bones and cartilage as they relate to other structures in the face. Superiorly, the paired nasal bones are attached to the frontal bone of the forehead, and at the sides of the bones, they are connected to the lacrimal bones of the eye socket, as well as the maxillary bone of the cheek. The nose is also made up of a pyramid-type structure of cartilages that help support it. There are a pair of upper lateral cartilages that attach to the nasal bones. This is a profile view of the nasal bones and cartilage. Both the upper lateral cartilages as well as the nasal bones contribute to the profile of the nose. When there is a bump on the profile of the nose, as shown here, nasal resculpting surgery, called rhinoplasty, addresses the nasal bones and cartilage by reducing or eliminating the bump. Here's a before and after picture of one of our patients who underwent rhinoplasty that addressed the nasal bump. The nasal septum divides the nose in half as shown in the picture. It is made up of both bone and cartilage. The bones are named the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid and the vomer, which are both at the back of the nose. The cartilage portion is towards the front and helps support the tip. The lower third of the nose is made up of paired cartilages called the lower lateral cartilages. This diagram shows the lower laterals in relation to the rest of the nose. Together, the lower lateral cartilages with the nasal septum make a tripod-like system to help support the tip as shown on the right. Malposition of these cartilages may cause abnormalities in the tip, including a drooping tip which makes the nose look too long, a boxing tip, or a bulbous or widely rounded tip. Rhinoplasty can address tip abnormalities by contouring the cartilages to give a more aesthetically pleasing look. These are before and after pictures of some of our patients who underwent rhinoplasty with tip contouring. If you look at the inside of the nose, up into the nostrils, you will see three shelf-like bony structures called turbinates on the sidewalls. These function as humidifiers for the air that we breathe in through the nose. They also have near them the openings to the nasal sinuses, which are shown in red above and below the eyes. Inflammation in these areas, which may be due to allergy, anatomic abnormalities, or infection, may lead to sinusitis and sinus infections. Often, a common complaint that we see is nasal obstruction. This may be due to abnormally swollen or inflamed turbinates called hypertrophy. Here is a camera view of what the normal turbinate looks like inside of your nose. In contrast, this picture demonstrates what turbinate swelling or hypertrophy looks like. In addition, the nasal septum may also be deviated to one side or the other, contributing to the obstruction. Both a deviated nasal septum and turbinate hypertrophy can be corrected through procedures called a septoplasty and turbinate reduction, which relieves the nasal obstruction. Often, these procedures are combined with a cosmetic rhinoplasty or reshaping of the nose. Well, we've just had a brief overview of the anatomy of the nose and how it relates to the function and cosmetic appearance. For more information about the nose, including rhinoplasty, please see our website. Thanks, and have a good day.